Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you exactly how I use a rolling weekly. This is going to include what a rolling weekly is, how to set one up, and then an actual real life example that I'll show you in my Hobonichi weeks. I've been using a rolling weekly for a couple years now, and I have to say it is probably one of my more useful weekly spreads. I'm so excited to be sharing it with you today, so let's get started. The primary purpose of a rolling weekly is to assign certain tasks to specific days. In that way, you are not migrating the same task between multiple days. So hypothetically, let's say I set out to clean my room on Monday, but I got pretty busy, so I migrated it to Tuesday. Well, the same thing happened, and it went from Wednesday to Thursday to Friday, etc, etc. Not only does this take up valuable space while you're planning, but it's also mentally fatiguing to look at the same task every single day, and it becomes overwhelming and starts to feel impossible. For the next week, let's say I tried a rolling weekly, and I saw that since I'm doing laundry on Wednesday and Thursday, and I'm going for a walk on Friday, it's best that I clean my room on the weekend, so I'm gonna say Saturday. In this way, I don't have too many overlapping tasks, so I know I'll get it done, and I can safely allocate cleaning my room to Saturday because I know I'm gonna have enough time to do it then. In order to start a rolling weekly, you're gonna wanna remember a key. The one that I'm showing first is the one that's also used in the bullet journaling method by Ryder Carroll, where a dot represents a task. If the task has been completed, it gets an X. If it's been partially completed, you do a dash. If it's been migrated to a further date in the future, it gets an arrow facing to the right. If it's been scheduled, it gets an arrow facing to the left. And if it's been canceled, it just gets a line through it. I have also come up with an alternative key if you'd prefer to use this one. Sometimes I find it to be easier. It's totally up to you. Mine is where a dash represents a task. It turns into a little plus sign once it's being completed. You do a circle around the task if it's being partially completed. If it's being migrated, then I just turn it into an arrow facing to the right. If it's being scheduled, I turn it to an arrow facing the left. And if it's been canceled, I just extend the dash all the way through. The final symbol is optional, but I like to allocate a star to represent either an event or an appointment. It just helps so that when I'm allocating tasks to certain days, I know when my appointments are going to be. Now to show you a real life example, I chose a week in November that had the most appointments and events. To begin the actual setup of the Rolling Weekly, you're going to start by writing the letters of the days of the week at the top left of the page. Now depending if you prefer to have a Monday start or Sunday start, it won't matter. Just make sure that you've got every day of the week there. Underneath, you're going to put the corresponding days of the week, the numerical days. Now this is optional, but I have found it to be very helpful, especially if you're in a bullet journal rather than a dated planner, such as the Hobonichi Weeks. It just makes it that much easier to reference when you're writing things down. I'm going to start by writing all of my events and appointments first. This is because they already have specific dates assigned to them. I know that I mentioned this step was optional, and it is, but because I'm doing a real life example, I did want to include them. So for this specific week, I know that I have a Chinese herbalist appointment at 3pm. It's also one of my best friend's birthday, and my friend Jess is coming to visit. Next, I'm going to draw a star on the date that correlates to the event or the appointment. I'm also going to draw a black line that will connect the initial event to the event that's being marked on the calendar. Not only does this help to draw your eye to certain dates, but it also allows you to do something called soft planning. Since Jess might be coming on the 22nd or the 23rd, I have not connected it yet because I'm not certain which day she's coming. Then, once you're finished with all of your events and appointments, you can now write down all of your tasks for that week. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a brain dump of every single task that I want to get completed that week. It can be anything from completing a workout, to going for a walk, to cleaning your room, etc, etc. 
A quick note here is that it is certainly easy to get carried away and to write down every task for the year that you want to get completed, but try and stay realistic and just keep it to the ones that you know you want to get done that week. This will help prevent task turnover. Now is the time that you can designate certain tasks to be completed on certain days. Primarily, you want to think in terms of which events and appointments you already have that day and which tasks you can pair together without it being too overwhelming. So for me personally, I know I can clean my room and fold my laundry on the same day, but I likely won't have enough energy to get a workout in as well. So I designate clean room and fold laundry on Monday and then a workout on Tuesday. Now, since I have my Chinese herbalist appointment on the Wednesday, I know that I won't be able to tidy my entire basement on that day, so I'm giving it two separate days for that task to be completed. Now, I'm going to attach a line to the days that I'm certain I want to get that task completed on. For example, I know I want to clean my room before Jess comes, so that's going to stay on Monday. However, although I would like to work out on Tuesday, I'm flexible, and if it moves to another day, then I will just draw a line to the day that it correlates to. Now, hypothetically, I would go through and start crossing off tasks that I got completed. So if I did clean my room, it would get an X. If I did fold my laundry, it would get an X. Maybe I didn't have time for that workout, so it's getting migrated. And maybe I partially tidied the basement, but it was more than I was anticipating. And I did go grocery shopping. This is useful because instead of having each of those five tasks written down every single day and migrating them day to day or having to back schedule them, you have a greater sense of when each task is going to be completed and how to schedule them so that you're not getting burnt out and they fit into your other schedule with your appointments. Now let's see this example in my Hobonichi weeks. You'll see that I scheduled my Chinese herbalist appointment and Becca's birthday on their respective days. Notice that I did not schedule Jess's visit in. This is because I don't know if it's the 23rd or the 24th, so I'm going to leave that for later. Hypothetically, if it was Monday, I would go down my Monday to see if there were any tasks that day, and there are, so I'm going to write those down. As a side note, I do understand how this system may seem overwhelming at first, but rest assured that this system is really helpful once you get used to it and start incorporating it into your planning. For me personally, it just makes sure that I don't take on too much work per day. Anyway guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you found this helpful and I hope I did an okay job explaining how to use a rolling weekly. Let me know in the comments down below if you have experience with a rolling weekly and how it's worked out for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and giving it a huge thumbs up and I will see you next time. Stay cozy and bye bye.